This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network, and we're a proud media sponsor for the upcoming Precious Metal Summit Beaver Creek, which is being held virtually this year. Joining me right now is Steve Poulton. He is the CEO of Altus Strategies. It's a publicly traded company. I got two symbols for you, ALS on the AIM and ALTS on the TSX Venture. Steve, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Hi, Robert. A real pleasure to be with you today. Pleasure is mine. So let's start with a very quick overview and history of the company, and then we'll go from there. For sure. Uh, Altus is an Africa-focused project and royalty generator. We're listed in London, and, and as you say, listed on the TSX Venture. We set the company up in 2007, and the management and the board of the company still own around 20% of the issued capital. Uh, so we have been running this business for 13 years. We decided to take it public in 2017 in London, and then we decided to acquire a company that was TSXP listed called Legend Gold in 2018. Jewel listed it uh, shortly after that. And then just this year, we announced a transaction where La Mancha, uh, a strategic uh, natural resource investor, specifically in the gold space, specifically in Africa, acquired a 35% stake in the business. So uh, let, let's, let's go with, what, what would you say makes the company unique and different compared to some of your peers out there? You know, I've been doing a number of interviews uh, of late with companies that are, have operations in Africa. So along with that, you know, where exactly in Africa are you currently operating? We're currently active in five African countries. and uh, They are Mali, Ivory Coast, Cameroon, Morocco, and Ethiopia. Our focus, as I mentioned, is on the gold space, primarily about 70% of our assets are in gold, but we're very much diversified. We've got exposure to bauxite and to iron ore, uh, copper and silver and, and, and other base metals. Um, so what makes us different is perhaps the fact that we're doing the royalty generation business in Africa. And there's no other company really on the planet that's doing what we're doing. All of our team on our board have extensive track records of operating in Africa, but operating successfully. And by that, I mean making discoveries and then actually going on to monetize the discovery for shareholders. And what we've done for in, in Altus is basically create what we believe is the optimal vehicle to provide shareholders with exposure to the benefits from discoveries, uh, from exploration success, as well as from the long-term sustainable income streams that you can get from royalties. We do believe those are the two sweet spots for the sector. We bring them together in Altus, and, and as I mentioned, our focus is, is doing that in Africa, because that's, that's our USP. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the projects that you currently have in the portfolio. You know, what, when do you expect to see them to start yielding some of uh, what you hope to be uh, a, yeah. lot, a lot of success? Well, we've already had been, I guess you could describe it almost as harvesting. We've been monetizing a few projects uh, over the last two or three years and we'll have seen in our news flow a bit of deal flow that we've done. Uh, going forward, I guess our portfolio of gold projects in Mali are our most advanced. We have um, some non-43101 assets and some 43101 resource assets there. Uh, one of our projects is called uh, Deba. And we have a 400,000 ounces of indicated and inferred resources there. Uh, and the market is quite excited about the potential for DEBA. For one, the resource potential to grow. We have six or seven other targets in addition to the current resource area, which we want to expand. Uh, that uh, project is located in a really key geological belt. It's just 13 or 14 kilometers from the Sadiola gold mine, which has had over 10 million ounces uh, mined from it historically. It's a very prospective gold corridor. We have another asset uh, in the south of the country of, of Mali, which is under joint venture with an Australian listed company called Graphics, who are earning in on, on that property. Historically, it had a 600,000 ounce resource, and due to the takeover or, or plan of arrangement we did with Legend Gold, that became a non current resource. And, and that team at Graphics are currently working on putting that into a current resource, which we'd expect to come out over the course of the next few months. Um, so, those are two, I guess you could describe them as flagship assets. But elsewhere, in, in Mali, we have a, a joint venture with Resolute on, a, on one of our properties, again in the south of the country. We recently sold two assets in Mali to TSX relisted Desert Gold in return for a royalty and also equity in, in Desert Gold. And, and if we shift our focus across to, to Cameroon, we have a very large gold project in the north of the country called Laboom. Uh, that's a 100% owned asset right now, and we're looking forward to getting on the ground uh, later this year there with some trenching and some drilling, I, I would expect. We have an iron asset with the Jork resource in the south of the country. It's just next to a deposit called Encoot that our team discovered uh, back in 2007 in a, in a previous business, which eventually was very successfully uh, taken over. In the center of Cameroon, we have a exposure to the bauxite project through what was our former joint venture partner, Canyon Resources, listed on the ASX. Uh, we have got a, a 15 or 16 million shares of Canyon currently, another 10 million shares 
owed to us. We think that's a fantastic uh, bauxite asset they have there. I believe it's the world's largest, highest grade undeveloped bauxite deposit, and it's sitting on a rail line. Uh, so strategically, and, and as the, the world wants to become more energy efficient, we suspect that the shares in Canada may do quite well in the future. So we have a good holding there. And then if we expand out even further and move into Ethiopia in a copper and gold belt in the north of the country, where some new discoveries are being made just adjacent to our, our assets there, we've made some pretty decent findings already early on and, and flipping across into Morocco, we've got a copper and silver asset that's about 15 kilometers from a, a mine that Manager has just opened up, uh, which is looking pretty exciting too. So that that portfolio is pretty unique for, uh, for a junior company. Uh, and the fact that we're focused on transactions, discoveries, transactions and royalties really does set us apart, I think. And for a generalist investor, they're getting a lot of exposure uh, for a lot, a lot of diversified risk as well. So they're, they're not taking on the traditional risk you would if it was just one or two assets in one, in one company. I don't think anybody will accuse you of not being busy. That is for sure. That's, <laughs> That's for true. that is for sure. You know, yeah, and, st <laughs> and Steve, you know, what's your background? How did you come into all this? Uh, background is a geologist um, and then a mining geologist at, at Campbell School of Mines. And uh, I joined a, a company in 1998 that was in Africa. It would happen to be a dual listed company. And that's probably the, where a lot of the DNA for, for the business may come from. Uh, it was in West Africa, Liberia, Sierra Leone and, and Guinea. And uh, I was there for a number of years and, and joined the board eventually. But while there, we set up a business uh, which was focused on Turkey. It was called Ariana Resources in 2002. We listed that in the London Stock Exchange in 2005. That's now a gold producing company still listed in, in, in London. And in 2004, sort of another business called African Aura, which was in Liberia and Cameroon and, and merged with my original business. And, and that became a great success in 2011. From that, we, we spurned or gave birth to uh, a gold business called Avasoro, and now, now a private uh, Turkish-owned gold mining company, and the Ferro, which was an iron ore business that was taken out. And so we set to, it, out us up in 2007 to basically bring all of the people that we worked with along the way and, and, and create this one unique vehicle. And then Sure enough, a year after creating the business, the world fell apart with the financial crisis and not one person in the world was interested in investing in exploration uh, in high risk areas of the world. Uh, everything was falling at that time and, and the sh shares of the companies we were involved with were, were, were doing terribly bad. Altus pivoted for a few years. We set up a, a natural resource investment fund, a five year fund, which we listed on the London Stock Exchange and it allowed our team to understand how to be on the buy side uh, as well as on the sell side, to understand what it's like to vet projects and, and vet management teams and go through that, that very important work of getting, getting granular information on whether an investment opportunity is good or bad or indifferent. Uh, and we, that's, that's been a huge asset to the business as well. But we reverted more back to the exploration side of things, the projects and royalty generation around about 2012 and 13. And that's when Sprott first invested in us and uh, they took a strategic stake and uh, one of their members, individual called Neil Adsed, joined our board and was on our board for about five years before we listed in 2017. So that, that's myself, um, but also um, the other executive director is Matthew Granger, similar background, geology and, and, then, and then mining geology, was also a co-founder of Ariana Resources, was the COO in uh, African Aura, and was a co-founder of, of Altus in 2007. And in fact, in fact our Chairman David Netherway is a mining engineer. He's built a number of gold mines in Africa and, and one in China as well. Very successful in his career. Uh, he was effectively a founder of the company as well, joining us very shortly after we came up with the concept and the thought of doing it. Uh, and then aside from, from, from David, we have uh, Michael Wynn, uh, who was previously the CEO of Legend uh, Gold. And uh, he is now currently the chairman of EMX Royalties. And, we like to think that, that we're a mini EMX in many respects. We have such huge admiration for that team and how they've gone about their business during the downturn and, and they're getting great market recognition now and rightly so. I think there's fantastic value in, in, that, in that business and their assets and how they're managing it. So having Michael on the board is a great asset. Uh, and while I'm going through, I, I'd mention Woody Milroy. Uh, so Woody was actually a, a, the lead non-executive director on the investment fund that we created and, and uh, is very strong in, in respect of compliance, has a track record in natural resources and, and in the mining sector specifically, but also in investment management. Uh, and the final director on our board is Karim Nazar. And Karim is the current CEO uh, of La Mancha. And with La Mancha's investment into Altus, where they acquired 35% uh, 
Uh, they have the right to point two representatives of the board. So far, they've appointed one, and that is Karen himself as the CEO. So Karen is running a plus $1 billion investment vehicle. Um, he, La Mancha's key investments are in Endeavor, uh, which they have a 24% shareholding in, nearly 25% shareholding in Endeavor, uh, and also in Golden Star Resources, where they're just over 30% shareholding. Those are the two key strategic investments. And that's more than enough to keep anyone very busy. Uh, they've got a lot of other things on as well, of course. But their third strategic investment is in Altus, which is a much smaller investment. But hopefully that speaks to the vision that, that we have and that they have. And Altus should be a much larger company in the future. So then from what you can tell us, just rounding, out the, rounding us out here, what, what would you say are the one to two things that investors should look for from the company for the rest of this year? I would say the focus would probably be on our Mali Gold portfolio and specifically the potential for resource expansion drilling at the Diva asset uh, for the updated resource to come out on the Tabacaroli asset and for the first phase of drilling to go into the Lacampla Gold asset. Uh, and so I'd put that in as part one. Part two, uh, the second item people should look out for is potential news flow of us going into new jurisdictions. Uh, and potentially making new acquisitions. So growing the business uh, organically as we've continued to do from, from day one. Uh, and hopefully we'll, there'll be some st strategic acquisitions that we make along the way as well. Um, so we think it's a, a perfect time for investors to take a look at us. We've been a little bit off the radar. Um, we've got a fantastic uh, network of existing investors and high net worths and people that follow the space. And now we're looking to broaden our investor base and attract uh, more uh, long-term generalist investors to the company. Um, so it should be a very exciting year ahead for them. With that, where can my audience go and find more information about Altus Strategies? Uh, our website is the best place to go. Uh, we are altus-strategies.com. And uh, we've been complimented many times for the content of our website. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty heavy, it's pretty rich in information. So uh, there's a lot there to digest. Um, but always, of course, uh, we've got phone numbers there. They can always contact the company, phone or email. And we're more than happy to respond to any questions uh, our shareholders and prospective investors may have on, on Altus. Very good. Well, with that, Steve, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Stay safe. Good luck. And I look forward to our next update. Thank you, Robert. I look forward to it too. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Again, my name is Robert Kraft. I'm your host on SNN Network. We're a proud media sponsor for the upcoming Precious Metal Summit, Beaver Creek, being held virtually this year. Steve, on behalf of Altus Strategies, will be there presenting. And thank you all for watching today.